Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Welcome to Brilliance Business TV, conversations with leading experts in business. I am your host, Mark Stephen Pula. We have a wonderful guest today, Angela Soong. How do you get to that next level? You may be struggling in life. You may be wanting to make progress and move forward into better light. We have a wonderful conversation today with Angela, and she'll be sharing some of the techniques she uses with her clients to help them to get to that next level. We are streaming live on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube. We're also on mspnewsglobal.com. We're also on the E360 TV network under Fresh Takes, going out to Apple TV, Fire TV, Android TV, Roku, and many more. And we're also on Business Innovators Radio Network. Let's bring in our incredible guest, Angela Soong. And before I say hi, Angela, I just want to make an official shout out to our show sponsors, Dreamweaver Artist Ranch. Welcome again, Angela. This is my second time interviewing you today. Well, it is, Mark. So thank you so much for inviting me on. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what we will be sharing in today's interview, Angela. Yeah, so my main interest today is just to let people know what I also do, um, other than being a property developer, consultant and a landlady for the last decade. I've also been trained in hypnotherapy by rapid um, in, in the course of rapid transformational therapy by um, Marissa Peer. So today I'm going to be talking a lot about the rules of the mind and um, how it is that I got to where I am and um, how other people can do the same thing. Excellent. And hypnotherapy can be very, very powerful. And I've heard so many good things about RTT as well. So fascinating conversation. So my first question today, tell us about another adversity you had that has greatly affected you to become who you are today. Yeah. So in, in the um, first show, we're talking about how I grew up under the stairs with my grandmother and uh, we were very poor immigrants. So today I wanted to share with you the fact that in the middle, um, part of my journey in the middle is where I've got married. And um, I believe that um, I would have this perfect marriage and um, as, as every woman and, and man would, would, you know, would want. And where it happened that it wasn't like that down the line and um you know i would i would after marriage i would wait for my husband to come upstairs after work um so that i can't wait to talk to him and um for years he would just come upstairs open the door and i'll be so happy to see him but he would be so disappointed to see me in a way that oh uh why are you not asleep I'm going to take a shower now. Um, uh, so just just go to sleep. OK, don't wait for me. And I'll be like, but I've got something to talk to you about. You know, I'd like to ask you about your day. Oh, don't ask me about my day. It's fine. Um, don't want to talk about work. Don't want to talk about anything. I just want to chill out now. Leave me alone. So I'll be like, oh, OK, then. Um, but literally, I had that 10 second window before he turns around to go and take his shower and then afterwards, he'll go straight downstairs and watch TV and he'll sleep on the couch. And um, there was a time I asked him, can I come downstairs with you and maybe watch TV with you? No, no, no. I just want to be alone. And this was very early in our marriage. And I thought I wanted I wanted to share my life with my best friend, with a soul, uh, with my soulmate. And the, the way that, you know, we project this romantic relationships, this partnership, this soulmate of being together to be for the rest of our life but it was very early in our relationship and this was what happened and obviously there was a, a big rift in our relationship now um i don't really want to talk about other things besides uh, just the superficial part 
of a relationship, really. But when you're in a relationship and thinking, this is where it should be, but it's not where I want to be. And I've also got young children now on the scene. And it'd be like, oh, no, you're a mother now. You don't need anything else. You should be looking after the children. You shouldn't really be going out to work. And if you are, make sure that you um, leave the children uh, in a safe place and they're looked after right. So there's a there is there's this expectation that actually I'm I'm being married and I'm a vast and the expectations that what I'm trying to say is this is a this is a traditional relationship it's a traditional marriage um, I didn't realize how traditional my ex husband was and the fact that because I was Chinese because my dad was also traditional. I had actually chosen someone who was very like my father, but I wasn't like my mother at all. I was actually a very career ambitious um, and I, I wanted to do well in, in, in my work. And I was always very good because I was programmed to do well in my work. But now I'm told to be this woman to stay at home, which I can't be, and to be this wife that should not demand anything and be this woman. I just so so basically I got to a point where one night um i was doing my properties i was acquiring properties and developing properties in the background of my husband not knowing at the time not knowing what i was doing and i'll come back before he will get back from work and i'll be doing the figures doing the finance and then um there's one time that i just had this big big heart ache it was a panic attack but I didn't know what it was at the time and I fell to the ground um, and I blacked out because I, I, I usually work very late at night time. But that heartache and where I blacked out and when I woke up again, conscious again, I, I've had these aches before. But I didn't know what it was. and I just ignored it. But at that point in time, when I woke up, that was my wake up moment thinking, no, things have got to change. I can't live this life anymore. This is a toxic environment for me. I am going to die in it one day. If I didn't die this time, then it has to change because it's not only about my life. Even if my life wasn't worthy of anyone to think of other than me being a good daughter for my um, parents, being a good wife or at least show up to be a good wife. Um, I needed it for my children. I needed this life to continue for my children because they need a mother in there as part of growing up. If I leave this life with just my children left behind with my husband, he would they would be in the same vicious circle that my ex would be in, where he also had his father died at four years old in a car accident and he had to live in council houses from one house to another, um, in damp, in mould, with rats. And he didn't know what love was was because his mother had to go out to work. So it would be the same vicious circle that if I left my children behind, then my children will be in exactly the same father's footsteps, the way they think, the way they're going to have their family, the way they don't know how to love and give love to each other and to their, to their own siblings and families and, and children in the future. So I, I needed to change this. So I made an affirmation that I was going to just, no, this is not about me anymore. It's much more bigger than me. So when I had that phone call with my parents uh, one day, um, I knew what was going to come. And uh, my mum and dad said to me, don't ever come home again. We want to, you're not part of our family. We want to disown you, you disgrace. And don't even think about going out to the city. And at that point in time, I thought, how could someone say this and think they're the king or the queen or something? And it's just so, but anyway, um, so for about a year or so, I didn't go home. I didn't get to stay in contact with my family. Um, but um, my dad finally realised that when my aunt died and I was the messenger to send that, that actually the things that happen in life is and, and, and things how people judge you, expect you to be, it's not that important anymore. The ego is not so important anymore. It's actually your family and the people who are living because you don't know when life ends. So, um, and that's what I really want to share with you today is, is that adversity is, is the fact that you can try to be as 
as as traditional um, and as um, living other people's expectations, but it can never supersede your love, your heart, the way that you really are. You're trying to hide yourself. So I've been hiding for years about my identity and who I was and what I really was in order for him to have the shine so that he can, so that I can have a better marriage, so that there'll be less um, friction in between us. But actually, hang on a second. I am this giant walking with this dwarf and I'm not walking. I have to kneel down, crouching along in order to be his height to match him. And I'm no longer this giant, you know, crouching and crawling on the floor. I want to be this giant who I actually am. I'm born to be and shine my light. So this is really what I want to share to other women out there, knowing that they need to shine. They do have their own light. They don't need to hide behind someone. They don't need to be ashamed about who they are and if they're ambitious and what all these um, inner gifts that, and talents that they have, they need to shine. Thank you for sharing those vulnerabilities with us and having the strength to follow your passion and to shine, Angela. And you mentioned affirmations there. They're so powerful. I use affirmations daily and I do quite a lot of them as well. You really can get great results with affirmations. My next question, tell me, what message or tips would you like to share with other women out there that can learn from this, what you have just shared? So just be authentic about yourself. No, go and explore what your potential is because your potential always expands. As you move forward, the universe expands your potential anyway. So you're always going to, what's next, what's next? Just, Just take those challenges, take those opportunities. And sometimes opportunities come like a, you know, a a ball dropping down and there will be opportunities coming down in your life at various times. But some balls, you will never, once it's gone, it will never come again. So you need to take it. And if it feels right in your heart, just go for it. So that's one thing I would say is don't worry about what's next. If it, ask the question, is this right for me? Should I be doing this? How does it feel? And if it feels right, then take it because There are always risks in life. There's always lots of adversities. The only thing is, after you've taken a decision, it's not about the decision whether it's right or wrong. It's actually about taking responsibility of that decision. So I always believe that follow your heart. It will never be a wrong decision. It would just be, yeah, yeah. And also set yourself a vision, set yourself goals. Make sure you have those. It might take you a long time to get there. It's not a straight line. It could be a wiggly, you know, up and down and so forth to get there. But if you have a vision, if you have a goal, if you know where you're going, what you want to achieve, then you're going to get there. It's just a matter of time. And it's a course of diversion, but it doesn't matter. You still get to the end where you need to be. I agree. I agree. Little steps will take you around the world and back. No, you do are. TT therapy. What is this and how can it help people, Angela? Yeah, so it's a it's a combination what Marissa here um have created with the modalities. So it's NLP, which we know a lot a lot about, neuristic linguistic um neural linguistic linguistic programming. It's psychotherapy, so i.e. cancelling and uh, a combination of talk therapy. It's healing. Uh, it's got um, cognitive um, behavioral therapy so all this combination what it is really is we go into uh, the deep um, unconscious mind because usually when we're what we're doing now is we're talking consciously unconsciously our mind has all this programming the hard drive of who we are and what it is that our beliefs are and hence when you ask the question we put our morals and values out with with the answer so that's our unconsciousness now when you go into the unconscious mind that is the part where um as i say all our beliefs are formed everything from our childhood everything that we've experienced and it's formed a belief like whether we like something whether we dislike something whether we um we make a decision on something based on our experience that 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 hurts or or that is actually a, a pleasure feeling so this is all in our unconsciousness and in our tt hypnotherapy we go into the unconscious we 
look and explore what the um, presenting problem is. So it could be anything, for example, a uh, fear of spiders or something, or fear of birds or whatever. And then when we go back into it, like, okay, where did that scene come from? How did you get that belief? Where did you get that fear from? So we look into all the scenes and then we change the meaning of those scenes. And that's what's great about it is we're not, we're only reviewing the scenes. We're not reliving it. And we make sure that the client knows this when they're in there. Um, we're looking at it in an angle. Actually, you were a little boy or a little girl that when that happened. And no wonder you had that frightening experience. And now you understand where that experience comes from and where you had that mindset and that belief. And we change that. We also do other modalities like um, child in the room, um, uh, um, com com uh, make uh, immersing the, the child into the adult so you become one. Um, also, um, we give lots of praise to the child who needed that praise in that moment of time. And most of the time, we all need praises, praises from an adult. When we're young, we're looking for uh, our moms, our parents, our guardians to give us that praise, to make us feel good. But when we lack that in adult life, we do things in order to make to, to please people so people would praise us so people will see us and value us and the fact that we are people pleasers sometimes or we choose to say this or do that is only because of what happened in our childhood so we make we go back to those scenes we make changes uh, and we go back to your childhood and we make changes like as if the parent is praising the child what words do you want to hear you know you're phenomenal you've got great coping skills you're beautiful you're lovable you know um, I love you so much um, you, you, you're my, you're, you're the best thing that's come to me. Your, your, whatever all those praises are. You're amazing. You're great. You're awesome. Um, I'm so glad I am your parent. Whatever it is, the child wants to hear, and um, the client participates in this, telling, you know, in the scenes and telling us um, what all the um, all the words they want to hear. They even dialogue with the herter. So if somebody has hurt them in the scenes which usually is much of the beliefs then we get them to talk to each other negotiate uh, say sorry to each other or tell each other actually you shouldn't be guilty about that you know it's not your fault or um it's actually you know the way that your dad um hurt you or or somebody else hurt you or the way that they snapped that your mom snapped at you at the time you know it wasn't their fault they were going through something else and it's just changing that meaning that it's not the child's fault or whoever the client is, is actually the, the hurter's fault. And when you know that, and then they um, have this, you know, I'm sorry to each other sort of thing, and understand and dialogue, you have this understanding. It's like, wow, that feeling just just changed now. It's gone. Um, and, I, and you can let go, let go of actually what really, really happened and change the meaning. So that's what we do. Yeah. It's really powerful and it's quick resource as well, isn't it, Angela? They can be very fast transformations. Yeah. In one session with me, we've had, I've, you know, it's it's just transformed. People stop smoking if they want. Um, they've had some sort of childhood trauma. And because of that, um, I take them through and we, you know, recalibrate everything in their, in their con uh, unconsciousness. And then they become this powerful person. There's this lady who couldn't open her mouth when she was interviewed because or if somebody set a tone on her that um wasn't was was, was sounded a, even a bit like her dad she would she couldn't open her mouth because she's had this suddenly she would just gauge out and see her dad in front of her or see this feeling and 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 she couldn't talk so we had to take those feelings out so she can be this phenomenal um speaker that she was Excellent. and have her voice yeah we're just going to a commercial break. We have some questions left to get along with. So stay where you are, Angela. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for part one. Join us after the commercial break. Hello, this is uh, Stephen Buckner, and uh, just wanted to tell you uh, I support the uh, Dreamweaver project. Um, it's a great product project where, you know, artists such as myself will be able to come together and uh, basically collaborate and to have a retreat to feel accepted and welcome. And that's something that artists here and around the world 
could always benefit from. So I just want to say, please support the Dream Reliever Project. Um, I think it's for a great cause. And uh, I salute all the independent artists out there and artists that are signed as well. And uh, have a wonderful day. Welcome back to Brilliant Business TV, Conversations with Leading Experts in Business. We're in conversation with Angela Soong. Welcome back, Angela. Thank you very much, Mark. Now, you do RTC coaching also. What is this? What's the difference between therapy and coaching and why do people need it? Right. So I'm also qualified in rapid transformational coaching. So the reason why it's called that, well, first it's coaching. Uh, let's let's define what coaching and therapy is. So therapy is when we talk about therapy in general, it's talking about the past, something that has created you, given your belief and it's caused you some trouble um, as you are now in this present moment. And you want to release that. So that's therapy. And that's what therapists do. Now, then we're in the present moment where we want to get to the future and set our goals and, and our visions and, and get to them easily. And on the way, there's going to be challenges and there's going to be, and, and we have, have all these feelings of anxiety and um, predicaments about what we see in the future and worry about it, right? So with coaching, what we do is actually try and help you plan to get to your future, to get to your goal. And coaching can be done weekly, monthly, depending on the needs of a client. Um, and for example, if their um, needs is a, um, for example, to get that promotion um, or to um, be ready for a marriage, get married or something or whatever it might be. Then for a coach, we're just going through with a client. OK, how are you feeling today? What have you got to do next week or next month? We make a plan and we help you set your expectations. But we take in also all those feelings of what you are getting and why you are getting it. And we try and release that at the same time whilst we try and set you to a better place. Now, as a coach, we don't tell you what to do. We, we just guide you where you should be and let go of any feelings, any anxieties um, and and all these obstructions, like many decision making, well, well, which one is the right decision then? How do you know? You know, and we ask the client the right questions and that's how we get there. So that's the difference between coach and therapy. Coaching is so, so powerful to get to success. And even coaches need coaches. Coaching can really, really help you to move forwards having the support of someone else. I'm a big advocate of coaching and I've had many coaches along my journey. My next question, Angela, what is your latest venture, Golden Wealth Creations and its USP? Why is it able to serve so many of us? Right. So Golden Wealth Creations is my new brand, a new company where I am putting courses out there to um, grow your wealth. Um, let people, let, let anybody who wants to increase their wealth, wealth set in any sort to be able to grow it. The, the uniqueness of this is it combines um, therapy. So it combines a bit of hair, um hypnotherapy in an RTT sense and it also combines the coaching aspect as well and the education aspect so most people you know for example you can get a lot of information from YouTube nowadays how to set your goals how to stop procrastinating things like that but the problem is why do people still not get there even though all the information is available why can't they achieve everything so easily or stop smoking or lose weight if all the diet recipes are out there and, and everything to do list is out there? Why are, they, why are people not doing it and why can't they get to where they need to be? And the reason is because first, you've got all the um, self-limiting beliefs, which you need to go back and change and let go. And then you've also got the part where you have all this anxiousness, anxiety of moving forward and not having that belief that you can move forward and get to your goal. For example, if you want to achieve 100K a year, for example, you know, some people who are on 25K, well, how do I do that? That's really far, far ahead. Well, let's start with, you know, as a coach, I'll be saying, let's start with doing 50K, you know, doubling that. 
because until you have that belief of it reaching 50k you're not going to have that belief of reaching 100k so there are steps that you have to allow them yes. but you yeah but you have to allow them to visualize that big goal as well uh, and to see that you, these small steps so and then there's the money aspect for example um you know you have self-limited beliefs and money uh, and, and and what your mom and dad have said to you, how hard money is, or you've seen something, how um, there's, you know, the five people around you are not even earning any anyone that you know are earning that. So you might have to change your network and go to di- and do different things and study different things. So it's about a combination of things. But what it is, it's working with your mind uh, and education at the same time to get to where you need to be. So whatever that might be. And you mentioned visualisation there, so, so powerful. Again, I visualise every night and when I wake up on a morning when the subconscious mind is most open to your visualisations. These are all things that successful people know and do, Angela, aren't they? I know it just it sounds woo woo and everything, but the more you talk to people out there now, the more successful people, most of them, they all can see the future where they want to be. And that's yeah. visualization, whether you believe um, in, in manifestation or not, you know, but I it do. is. Yeah, yeah. And visualization. And the, when you're saying, uh, Mark, you know, in, in the morning or in the nighttime, that is when you people get into alpha mode. So our consciousness, we're in different modes of a day, different um, wavelengths. And in uh, when we before we go to sleep or when we wake up, we're still in alpha mode. Um, and most of the time when we're conscious, we're in beta mode. So to get really deep into your subconsciousness, we have to go into the alpha mode, uh, go into theta, and it could go in, you know, into delta and a lot more. But the more deeper we can go, we can actually go back to subconsciousness and, tra- and change things and, and visualize things. And the, the, the thing is, the mind doesn't really know whether something is actually real or not real. So what's happening during the daytime and what you're doing, you know, OK, we call that as perception and reality. But when we start visualizing, putting pictures into our head or even the future into our head, we're like, oh, well, when you're when you're going along the way, you're like, actually, I've, I've been here before. I've done it. And it's like, well, is it real or is it not? But so the mind doesn't know whether it's real or not, and it will accept whatever you tell it, whatever you visualize, whatever you want it to see. So put lots of just good words in inside you, um, you know, like these affirmations of how brilliant you are, you know, and you can, you can, you can do things. Yes. F- yeah, phenomenal coping skills. Um, you are, um, you are balanced. You're heard. You know, you have your own voice. Um, you can speak so easily to people and have, and, and especially, for example, public speaking. You know, I'm calm, I'm collective, and I, I uh, people want to hear from me. You know, you're saying good things to yourself, but if you're saying negative things. How are you going to feel good about speaking publicly, for example? Or I, yeah, I, I believe in manifestation, and I do a lot of affirmations through the day because it's important to watch your thoughts through the day as well. But I truly believe when you're visualizing, I believe that's real. I feel the vision is real, and you're bringing it in to your reality, knowing that the past, present and future are all one timeline and you're bringing it into that timeline, if that makes sense. I don't know your belief, but that's my belief. Absolutely, absolutely. You visualise, you're going to see and get that. That becomes a reality. Make sure you put those details in. The more details in, the more realistic it is. Angela, I thoroughly enjoyed having a conversation with you. We have a couple of minutes left. Just quickly tell us about your latest venture in becoming regional director of Global Woman Club Birmingham and what will this club go on to do and what is the mission and the role of this club? Gosh, two minutes is not going to get there. But... Basically, it's empowering women and it's letting them have a voice. So at this club, we ha- we, we share this mic. We listen to every woman, whether it's one or two minutes or the speaker, and we let women speak about what it is they want, whether it's their aspiration, whether it's what they want, whether it's connecting with people, getting more friendships, getting more business, uh, selling, or promoting their business. It's it's giving them a voice. That mic is theirs for two minutes when they become a, a, a global woman. Or if they were a speaker, then it's 20 minutes. Then um, it's about support to each other um, and building that business up. Uh, if you need to uh, start a business, you don't know how, you know, if you uh, need a coach, uh, if you need help, 
it's it's just that support that we collaborate and get together and share our network and connections. And it's amazing because people of all calibers come together uh, and we have this network. Can I just leave you with um, this affirmation that I use? Just literally. You can. Seven, yep. Yep. So I say to myself day and night, I am whole. I'm perfect. I'm strong. I'm powerful. I'm loving. I'm harmonious and I'm happy. And there's three more things that I put into it with the RTT. And that is I can connect with everybody. I have everything available to me, everything. And I am enough. Powerful. I've got similar ones. I always say I'm whole, complete. I'm limitless. I'm powerful. I am love. We've got very similar affirmations, Angela. Now, everyone who is connected with Angela today, you can connect with Angela soon on Facebook. And if you are interested in your own powerful transformationals with hypnotherapy, RTT, connect with Angela. It's Angela soon, 888 at gmail.com. Com. That's Angela Soong, 888 at gmail.com. Angela, thank you so much for being thank my guest much. today. I thoroughly enjoyed having a conversation with you. Thank you so much, Mark. So it's, it's my pleasure. The pleasure's all ours. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Brilliance Business TV. Until next time, bye for now. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.